Hey, shout out to the people watching the visual pod. You see, I got on that Bobby Boucher. Turn up. <laughs> What are we supposed to be doing? We You're supposed to be right, right here. There's things popping up here. Things. Wow, the drop is supposed to be for that. But yo, 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 it's the Mary Bros Podcast, episode 86. Terrence loves to just step off through the drop now. What's my up with man, that? You I supposed thought to I was getting ready to do that. No, nah, look, you he doing my DJ thing you, you, in the beginning. Now he's doing the intro. I said, damn, where can you, I get it? You would have been able to do it. <laughs> We you leaving your double dutch ass out? Look, you know how you jumbled that look. Uh, trying to get in. You put the hands back because you know you're going to run in. Yeah, that's, you used to be double dutch. You got to run in double dutch, double dutch neck first. Yeah, all right. You were double dutching with the uh, the old phone wire. Real real ones, no. The only, hey, look, all my fellas out there. Hold on, wait, Terrence. I got to introduce the podcast. Welcome to the Mighty Bros Podcast, episode 86. This is the Han, Hans War episode. Mm -hmm. Zach Ertz episode. Uh, Todd Heap episode. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of a uh, uh, Jordan Reed episode. Let's talk about it. You just lumped him in with Zach Ertz and Heat. Two legit tight ends. Oh, uh, who has the receiving records for Washington? Jordan Reed. Let's talk about it. Who are Heath? we talking about? Todd Heap, Super Bowl champion. We're talking uh, about uh, Jordan Reed, who leads his uh, franchise and uh, everything. Does he have a ring? He doesn't need a ring to be the franchise. Oh, okay, because Todd Heap and Zach Ertz have rings. <laughs> I'm not feeling this no more. I'm not feeling this. Look, Let's you know get what? I'm done it, with man. this episode. Ladies, I'm sorry, but it's a lot of shit that happened in the sports world. And I told Terrence, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done not talking about sports. Terrell, believe it or not, thinks that we don't talk about sports. Enough. We don't talk about it enough. Okay. I'm with it. I'm, I, hey, look. I'm, if, if. And you know what, y'all? The NFL picks are going to go away. It's going to be something to come in this place. Hopefully. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. That's why the podcast will look shorter, y'all, because we don't have uh, 25 minutes of NFL of picks, picks no more. That's crazy. I was like, damn, why the podcast looks so, uh, you know? Yeah. Did you see, and this was at the tail end of the last podcast, um, did you see what Joey Badass was saying on, uh, on Twitter? No. This man got up there and said some the biggest, wildest shit ever. I'm going to just let you hear it. What he said is... Okay. And then you can just tell me what you think. Big shout out to Compa Complex Ambition for uh, posting this clip because that's the, that's the way. You should be in control. Damn, damn, damn. My bad. Loud as hell. Listen to this bullshit. Now, what about masturbating? I don't masturbate. He doesn't like to come. I think that's weird. But maybe for he a man. Not for a come. woman. I think. So I believe that women are the more sexual, sexual beings. You know what I mean? They're the more sexual. Jen, I feel like as a man, it's like you should be in control. Like you should have self-control over yourself. It's like if you at home masturbating, it's like, nigga, what are you doing? Like you wasting your time. This shit that could be done. You know what I'm saying? Like you want women, like you need to fucking do shit. You know what I'm saying? If you sitting home watching porn masturbating, I just think that's Joey, some of them have to run one shit. out or they'll come in two seconds. Some of them have to run one out. Fellas at home, well, don't listen, listen niggas got to stop rub being some first. sorry ass <laughs> Nah, but I feel like the self-control thing, that's, that is, it just, it that's is. That's his take. Then he also said, when I have sex with a woman, I don't, I don't nut. I want to save my life force. I don't know if you've seen, but it's like a trend of Niggas getting on podcasts and saying stuff that they think is impressive. Like Kevin Gates. It's like, nigga, you about to really sit up here and act like you never got a nut off. <laughs> Let's not do this. <laughs> this is that bullshit that I'm talking about. What are you talking about? If he had a better reason, then I would have This is my thing. It. I read The Way of the Superior Man too, bro. I know why you're saying that you shouldn't come. I know it. <laughs> Because in the way of the superior man by David Dieter, it's the book that I tell Toretta to read all the time. In the very end, it gets very, it, it goes that route. And you're like, it, it makes complete sense though. Like the book basically says you should never nut. You know what I'm saying? When you have sex with your girl, she nuts, you don't nut. You know what I'm saying? And like, and what's the reason? The reason is to preserve like apparently like when you nut, you're releasing like I'm, I'm just gonna call it like manpower, but like like yeah, he willpower. called it a, he called it a life force. Yeah, like apparently like that's why Jason does his six month cleanse type shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's big behind that because apparently there is a philosophy out there that a lot of men believe in, where if you don't nut, then apparently you're gonna have 
They said the the things that they've been able to do and create while preserving that energy. Right. But my thing is, look. Semen retention, right? Yeah. But look, trying to act like you never got a nut off. Yeah. I'm not saying that nobody should be sitting at home watching porn all day, beating off all day or something like that. But like saying, you know, you you sitting at home. So you're telling me, Joey Badass, you've never got a nut off. It's crazy. It's crazy because. Great. (laughs) I hope that you get her, bro. Whoever you looking for that earthy nah, chick Terrence, that said no. some shit. He basically said, because I was with him. He said, if you if you just at home, you need, and you, you just watching porn all day, you need to, what the fuck are you doing? 100%. Look, he said, you need to go out and get a girl. But then he goes through the interview and says, when I get a girl, I don't know. Nah, fuck that. He's talking crazy. Right. This nigga was like, I think if you masturbate and you a man, then that's weird. So you've never done it before. Like you're talking as if you have not done this. That's like me saying, if you if you drive a car, I just think you're weird. So hold on, wait, let's just pause. You don't drive, you never drove a car. Oh, so you was weird. You know and what I mean? You, like, yeah. <laughs> why why even speak like this? That's I almost believe- as ridiculous. To, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you good. That's almost as ridiculous. Did you see Kevin Gates? Yes, that's what I was gonna tell you. Bro, first off, that was hilarious. I put my hand on the car battery. <laughs> this uh, for context. Kevin Gates got on an interview, and I don't know why people just sat there and let him say this shit. Kevin Gates was in an interview. He fucking said that he, a delayed, it was pulled over on the side of the road. He got out. Her car wouldn't start. So he put both of his hands on her battery and told her to start the engine and it started up. But he said, this is this thing that I've been, this thing I was that blessed I do. with. I put my hands on the battery, yes. told her to start the car up and started up. I told her to speak nothing of this. Funny as hell. That's the this shit that you say to a joint when y'all twist it, y'all like. And and for real, for real, both of y'all too fucked up, but you not making no sense. It's like, what are you talking about, bro? This is that's dirty Mac and 101, bro. That's dirty Mac one 101. Right it now, is, and I feel like there's a trend of people just getting on platforms and just saying stuff that, that that's sound cool. Shit. Now, when it comes to the masturbation thing, speak nothing of it. Yeah. <laughs> I am a I am a firm believer in post nut clarity. The, my dark times during the pandemic, um, even before, like when you was in that that toxic single time and that ex hit you up, like I'm round your way at eight if you gonna be home. Oh yeah, you're right. Sometimes you rub one out. Now my mind is clear. Now it's like ah, oh, I'm not gonna do that because. But but if that's that's the the biggest to me benefit to me is post. Post clarity. I get the life he's living though. I get the life that, that that he's living. I just don't like when people live a you like you you figuring new things out about yourself. Uh-huh. And now you trying to shit on people like you've been living this way. Like is this been you this what you've been saying your whole hip hop career? Can I go listen to your first mixtape and you're not saying nothing about you know what I'm saying this what this what you're talking or did you elevate to this and now you trying to shit on people who were doing who might still be doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? You stop eating pork and you a vegan because you done figured it out now. You done ate pork for 20 plus years, but now you're like, these motherfuckers, them motherfuckers eating pork, them motherfuckers eating pork. Like, is that really the attitude? Like, even Malcolm X was talking about how we shouldn't have that that attitude Mm because you was once ignorant as fuck before. So, I mean, it's whatever. I just don't like the... I get it. Though. You and you on a radio show. You you trying to talk to he with a know, three three women. Three women. You know what? You look. Yeah. You trying to be impressive. You know I'm an impressive dude. <laughs> Two distant strangers. Um, I was just saying how that nigga had. I I I was the only person in the world that banged with his single though. Everybody else said that that, that joint sounded like it was from Madden. I was going. I was asking you. Uh, I knew I was going, if I asked you that you would, you would react that way. That's why I was funny. I thought our Terrence gonna go off about this shit. We were supposed to have the biggest story. On Wednesday, but um, and not even unfortunately, but we unfortunately didn't because there was some. Uh, do you want to talk about that verse? We can get to that. We can do that. Verse. Let's definitely we can we can get to that. We don't have to stop. No, nah, everybody listening wants to hear that. All right, but we'll talk about Brian Flores first. We can talk about it if you want. No, we'll go Brian Flores first, and then you had the floor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, bet y'all. So. Um, Brian Flores is suing, is actively opening a uh, case against the NFL and uh, three teams, the Giants, the um, the Broncos, and who was that other team? Why are you saying the, the Broncos like that's not your team? 
You should be team. saying my Broncos. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to incriminate me with these. I don't no, know what they're doing. Squad. In but um, but I yeah. said Terrell, y'all in the news this week. <laughs> 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 so uh, basically, um, he's basically speaking out against the fact that um, like th- there's an issue when it comes to the diversity in the, in the NFL amongst black coaching. And, and hiring black coaching. Like, we have the Rooney rule, but it really doesn't really do shit. Now explain, so, you got to explain the Rooney rule for, for folks who might not know. If you're not familiar with the Rooney rule, the Rooney rule is basically a rule that before you can make a hire, um, you have to interview two minority candidates for the job before you can make a hire. And now, that's for NFL teams, y'all. That's for NFL, NFL teams, teams that's hiring head coaches. Before you can, before you can hire head hire co- somebody, you yeah. have to interview two minorities. Two minority candidates have to be interviewed before you can make a decision. Now, just think about what that sounds like. If we just yeah. start there, yeah, it, I think that's bogus. It's stupid as hell. Yeah, I it's don't like that rule at all. It's the stupidest rule because it's made to, it's formed to think that oh, this would be a good thing because that means uh, a a minority candidate has to get an interview shot. But, like, obviously, people have their choices. Yeah. So they're really just doing sham interviews, what they call a sham interview, fuck it. Like, Brian Flores is suing the Giants for this year, the Dolphins for his past, this for last year, and, and my Broncos for 2019. Basically, I don't know if you know this, but Brian Flores – did an interview with us in 2019, mm-hmm. and apparently, based on what he's saying, um, he said, I did nine interviews for head for head coach. Only one ball club came late, and that was the Broncos. And he said John Elway and some other people on our staff was fucked up. Came in that joint twisted. He said it was sitting back. He said you can tell. Yeah. You seen it? Yeah. He basically said, like, you can tell who's doing an interview and who's Shane. Just, what were they celebrating? Who knows? Right. What the fuck was we celebrating? <laughs> Have to hi- fire Vance Joseph and getting ready to hire Fangio? <laughs> That's why I said I believe his ass was drunk. John Elway been doing some real wild boy shit. He made that botch that. Well, I'm not even gonna talk about that. Um, but back to the shit. <laughs> he made a fucked up decision on our quarterbacks. <laughs> fucked it up since El- since Manning left. But um, I thought that this was super important, and I'm behind Flores. People are like. What's crazy is these allegations came out about my Broncos, right? Yeah. I follow everybody. Mike Cleese, Jack Stevens. I'm sorry, Zach Stevens, Joe Rose, everybody. Yeah. I have never seen the backpedaling that I've seen yesterday and the day before. People saying, there's no way we started our interview late. But, but we had Vance. Oh, but we're not racist. We had Vance Joseph. It's not about... This this whole situation and, and what I think people should take away from this, people are starting to point to specifics behind this Flores situation. Yeah. All they see is black coach fired suing the NFL for racism. Racial, racial discrimination. So they say, but he had a job. Oh, but there's this, but we just like my Broncos are saying we hired Vic Fan uh I'm sorry, not Vic Fangio, but uh Vance Joseph. <laughs> so how are we racist? It has nothing to do with the fact that you hired him. Yeah. It has everything to do with the process. Yeah, I'm about to say That's how you carry and everything. Because I and, and what the, the lawyer said is that the Rooney rule being in place, there's less black coach black head coaches now than before they made this Rooney rule. It's like worse with that. Yeah. And so it's just a fucked up situation. And he's honestly putting his whole career on the line. If you think about the Rooney rule and what Mm -hmm. that says, like you have to hire somebody black or not hire. I'm sorry. You have to interview somebody black. It's like as the person that's getting getting interviewed, who Mm -hmm. happens to be black or minority or minority, you can interview a Ron Rivera and that counts. Right. All right. bet. So like as the minority interviewee, what do you feel like going into the interview? It's like, damn, they about to just get me out the way for real. Like I could be a part of their Rooney rule. That's just ridiculous Mm -hmm. to me. The Rooney rule that you have to interview somebody of a minority. Yeah. What if, honestly, there's no good minority candidates for that one year? Then you're just interviewing whoever. Then you're just trying to get anybody uh, yeah. an interview. And I feel like that's not progress. Yep. Y'all checking off a box? 
they'll interview a offensive coordinator somewhere. And I like that Brian Flores said he was trying to get to the hearts and minds of the people who are making those processes because that's really what it is. Like if you give them the option to just check off a box on this shit, then they're definitely just going to check off a box on it. Now, my question to you is like the way that he's going about this, right? Mm-hmm. Is this the smartest way to do this? What do you mean? Meaning, like, this is a very risky... I'm thinking about the progress, like, us going forward. Like, all right, bet. After your stance, the next steps. Bet. You're taking a public... This is like a public... Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's publicly going up against them, which isn't going to look good. I don't think he'd probably get an NFL job because it's going to look like you're going up against all the owners. Mm -hmm. He said that he was, um, he said he still wants to be a coach. Still has two interviews while he's doing this. So it's mad courageous for him to do this. What yeah. I was thinking about is just like, is this going to get looked at in a way where the progress we get from this is okay? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's reactive as, a, as opposed to Are we going to get that Oscar so white type of progress from this where we start you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With Oscar So White, y'all, it seemed like we were start just we, we were starting to get awards, and it felt like we earned them. But some mm -hmm. of those awards definitely felt like well, remember we trying to get black people out the way. Yeah, you and know? remember Oscar So White was one year, then the following year they all of a sudden now we they had mad black winners. Regina yeah. King won like two years in a row. The Mahershala mm -hmm. Ali Moonlight win, La La Land winning, and then them switching it to Moonlight. It yeah. was just like, did we really win? Like, yeah. are we really earning these awards? So right, in the same right, sense with right. Brian Flores, you're going to come out publicly against the, mach the, the machine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you do exactly what Colin Kaepernick did. And I felt like what Colin Kaepernick did was a learning lesson in what to do and also in a way what not to do. What didn't you like about what Colin did? The only thing I don't like about what Colin Kaepernick did is... I don't know. I don't, I don't really necessarily dislike anything. I just learned because he had no choice. I'm just saying what I don't like about Colin Kaepernick's move in regards to the progress we got from it is it seems like, all right, bet. Colin Kaepernick took a knee in the NFL mm -hmm. for the national anthem, ended up losing, not necessarily losing his job, job basically, but he lost his career for that. For what progress in the NFL? You know what I mean? Well, and that's, yeah. I mean, he but he did shed career. light. He did shed some light on something that people were not taking serious yeah. at his level. That's true. In his profession. And I think the spreading of awareness is what he really achieved. Yeah. Like open uh, opening uh, opening of eyes. But I'm like, all right, if we think about this racist machine that is the NFL, mm -hmm. progress in that is gonna start with hearts and minds, like B Brian Flores says, but was this the right way? You know what I was thinking? I was like, what if he, which is, and y'all, look, I'm speaking as a, I'm green. I'm just speaking hypothetically. What if he kind of like motioned it? Like, I'm feeling like I want to might take legal action because of A, B, and C. But he kept it under wraps. And you use the fact that I'm going to go public with this. What is he protecting? Is what I ask. Like, what is he not doing this to protect? Because I feel like going public with this, now it feels like the moves that they make might not be genuine and it might just be for the public because the eyes are on, are on them. You know what I mean? Y'all came out within 30 minutes up to an hour of when that article was posted and said, we don't recall none of that. Everything we he's saying no, is bullshit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, right? NFL, the NFL's response was bullshit. The and, NFL's response was complete And bullshit. this is them going up against the fact that, okay, there's a public message out there now. I've watched shows like House of Cards where, yeah, it's a show. But they say stuff like, Frank will pull somebody in the room and say, we need you, we need this to change. And the person's like, I'm not changing, I'm not changing. And they say, okay, bet. well, guess what? We know that you went to the so-and-so camp last year where all of those people died and you were responsible for something, something. And we are going to take it public because remember he she, he had mm -hmm. he had the girl on his wing who was the reporter, but they went public with the story. They were threatened to go public with a story to get things moved around. And my thing is like, 
we always go public and we always look the same way. We get thrown in the same box. And it seems like we get the same progress. Nah, you're right. Which and is absolutely fucking nothing. I think what you're alluding to is the fact that when Colin Kaepernick went public, they were like, oh, he's showing out because he took a knee. I'm, I'm sorry, he's showing out because he got benched. He's just doing this because now right. he's not the starting quarterback. And the same thing people are saying about Brian Flores saying, oh, well, he got fired and now he's trying to call, pull the race card. Right. Um, but it's, I think, and I think Brian Flores learned from Kaepernick that me doing this yeah. means that more, more light is going to be shed on a shitty. And I understand that I could potentially business. not coach again because I saw what happened to him. Yeah. It's definitely and, honorable. Definitely something that takes yeah, mad 100%. guts. I just be feeling like, even if you would have did it how I was talking, mm -hmm. you would have still been probably black blackballed. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I don't know. Maybe maybe going public could have been used as a, a power play. 100%. I'm just hoping that the fact that it's public now, we don't just start seeing, not only do we start seeing fuckboy moves from all of the NFL owners trying to make it seem like they love black people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The NFL already tried that. What the... Think, think about it. Don't let me say shit. Go ahead. God, damn. Go ahead. God damn. Go ahead, Terrell. No, you got what it. You're about to say. Nah, because you're stepping on it. So you're saying the NFL already did it? We've been doing that. They got in racism on the back of every helmet. No, but I mean like... All of a sudden next year, they hire nine black coaches. You know what I mean? Are we earning those jobs? Or are we just being put in places as gimmies? Because let me tell you, the gimme jobs look like progress. The gimme awards, the Oscars so white, gimmies. We watch them do Oscars so white and give us all of those awards the next year. You know what I'm saying? But then look what happened. They shit on Chadwick. So is it real progress? Or is this just the cover up because we got something going on? Look at what we did this year. Daniel Snyder, our owner, got into that bullshit with that lady. Or with that girl who was trying to press charges. Then all of a sudden we're we're uh, retiring Sean Taylor's jersey. Then or, or at the next game at the halftime show, we got we found that out like three days before they were gonna do it, mm -hmm. and it was after the news drop. So my thing is the NFL has a history of saying, okay, we got to do some shit to cover this up. Now the issue is we don't have enough black coaches. So I feel like they don't, they want black coaches. Fuck it. Raheem Moore. This dude. This dude. We just going to hire a bunch of people. But is that progress? Is that progress? Yeah, yo, we got black coaches now. But do y'all, like like he said, what's most important, I think, about what Brian Flores said is it has to, it has to affect the mind and hearts of the people that's really doing it. Because if they just going to make a power play, they will 100% do that. Right. I think it's not as easy... With that, though, like an Oscar so white where you can give this person an award or because the issue that they were saying is that these white owners don't trust or know how to connect to these black coaches like they do with the coaches they pick. Keep so in they, mind yeah. of the good old boys club. Like these people are higher people that they this person is a friend of this person or I know him. He's got this tie or whatever. Us hiring Nathaniel Hackett, Eric B. and me from the, the Chiefs, yeah. still not having a head coaching job, and people trying to step on, people try to step on that dude and say, oh, Andy Reid's calling the plays. They just did an interview with Andy Reid, and Eric, Andy Reid said, I trust EB with everything. He steps in, he calls plays, I call plays. Okay, so but they try to step on that. Yeah, but but, but the Patriots special teams coach can go and get a, uh, a head coach. And that's job. the thing. But these owners don't. I don't know if these owners can just say, "Oh, but we just start hiring black quarter, black black uh, coaches," because I don't know how it would work with the good old boys club. You know what happened to um, Flores in Miami? Did you? So basically, the owner Stephen Ross. I think I do know what you're going to talk about. The games, the losses. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and say it. They were trying to get Flores to do all types of shit that he just was not in his football DNA. Number one, they was telling him, you need to meet with this uh, top-ranked quarterback. He disagreed with that. was like, nah, I'm about to meet with a potential good quarterback. They didn't want to say who the quarterback was. Hopefully, it'll come out. We'll find out who it is. But he disagreed with that. He randomly got invited on a boat, and the quarterback was there. 
to meet with Ross, all of a sudden the quarterback is there. And he rolled out. And that he said, when I did that, that made me look like somebody who was – he said they painted me as somebody that was hard to work with, somebody who wasn't, yeah, like a good whatever. They painted him a certain way after that. But just before that, they was going to pay him $100,000 per game he lost so they could secure a draft pick. You know what's crazy? Did you hear Hugh, ja- Hugh uh, Jackson? Hugh, yeah. You know Hugh Jackson was just on I Am Athlete not too long ago. Coached the Browns, went 0-16. Yeah. He just came out. I don't know if you just seen this. He just came out and said the exact same thing happened to me with the Browns owner. He said, I tried to tell y'all, but it got swallowed up in all of my losses. But people was making it seem like I went out there and lost all them games just because I wasn't a good coach. But people don't know that I was offered a good price as well. Damn, so he was losing them joints on purpose. The Browns was trash. It's like, come but, on, but, but, Hugh Jackson. But, 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 Terrence, it's going to be tough for you to get that off because. Nah, but see. See, y'all, we that's why say, I was losing but, those nah, games. Terrence, see, <laughs> but that's, what, that's what people are going to do. They're going to try and discredit by saying. I'm just oh, saying it's hard to good. get that off. It's just hard to get that off for him. It's just a fact. You went 0-16. Now you're trying to say, hey, y'all. Because look. But them going 0-16 secured them that draft pick. Right, that tour. Or, no, I'm talking about the Browns. Oh, I'm sorry, that Baker. No, he got Baker. They weren't 0-16. They were 0-16 and then got Baker. They went 0-16 and then got Baker. Mm-hmm. He's saying that the, uh, the owner came in and told him the same thing. All I'm saying is that when I heard about that, yeah. I was like, this shit don't really sound surprising. No, it don't, not at all. And it don't sound like a race thing either. We be telling teams to tank. I'm about to say, it don't sound, that well, part doesn't sound like a race thing. No, that that's, part sounds like a that's, Yeah, that's a not a ethic. race thing. Thing, uh, ethics thing like to uh, me yeah that's just what happens in the nfl but um so far as uh flores when it comes to the race thing we don't have any black owners at all um there's no there's one black head coach now which is mike tomlin keep in mind the rooney rule originated in seattle from seattle's um staff came up with the rooney rule okay. and now they're the only franchise that has a black quarterback i mean a black um head coach we've yeah. had one have your team ever had one never I hope that this is good progress, and I just hope he does, just doesn't get swallowed this way. That's why I said, go in public. Yo, they racially discriminated against me. Did y'all see the interview? Did you see the interview? I watched the whole thing this morning. I felt like he kind of fumbled the bag a little bit with the interview. Why? The interview was great, but did you see what happened when they asked? They was like, what do you want to see change? Like, what do you want to see? Like, if, you, if it was you, what do you want to see change? He got to it, but I felt like he was Fumbling to get there, he said, "What's the word I'm looking for?" It's like, mm, this is not about to help you. And I've and I've and I've seen like heavy PR press. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The way people look at shit. Yeah, but you know honestly, I don't think he's supposed to. And it sounded like that joint was edited. But look, that's just me. That's just me. Go back and look at the interview. I don't think he should have to have a decorated answer because the stance he's taking to me says enough. My thing is, look, they ask you, "What do you want to see?" You know what I'm saying? What do you want to see? What interview did you watch? Because I watched the, the ESPN, ESPN joint ESPN and it was fine. The 20 minute joint. Go back and rewatch it. They asked him, "What do you want to see?" If it, he said, "If it's if it's you, what is it that you want to see?" Because he was playing that role. That, that the interviewer was playing the. What is the problem? Like, why yeah, are he you was. not like white? Yeah. You know, <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he really was playing that classic role. But like, I just feel like he started fumbling. I'm like, come on, come on, like say this shit. But you know what? I felt like he had to be real careful with his answer. What do we want? More black coaches in the NFL. Yeah. That's what we want. Right. We got 70% black players in the league. Mm Y'all know this. Like he said, the numbers speak for themselves. Bet. So stand in front of it. He did, though. He said. He did. But my thing is. You making it seem like he didn't, though. He did. He did. But my thing is, why are you fumbling? Go watch the the interview. Why are you fumbling when they ask you, what do you want to see? Because. It is a scary stage. I cannot judge him. He's standing on a stage that I might not have the heart to get up on. But my thing is, like, I'm getting ready to say, like, what do you want to do? If we get the courage to stand on that stage, God damn it, when we get up there, we got to project. You can't be up there, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, just for people to, you know, for the owners to have the mindset of wanting to hire a black. It's like, no, we want to see more black coaches in the NFL. Right. We got 70% black players. You mean to tell me that we can't hire no black coaches? Why do we not speak with this type of confidence? You've been in the league 16 years. Yeah, he should have definitely had more confidence on that stage. You've been in the league the same time frame as Tomlin. 
It is terrifying. Where's the confidence? It is terrifying, though, because you don't want to look like the angry, he painted as the angry, salty black guy. So he has right. to stay calm. He has to stay calm. If he was Tom Brady, he could slam a tablet and people just say it's cool. But look, cool. I'm not even saying get up there and slam a tablet. When they ask you, speak direct and, and project. But he also did say in an interview that there's 70% black players, like you said, mm -hmm. and he said, these black coaches can connect to these players better than a lot of these that's other true, people that they true, pick. That's, that's true. I heard that part. And he was like, some mm -hmm. of them are on my staff. Some of them on my staff. Well, yeah, I know they ready. It. He was kind of a, he had a little bit of a, a shaky voice. But I'll tell you what, the way that that dude, the, the way that the interviewer was asking them questions, he would have lit a fire under me. Y'all ever see the interview where the dude was asking Floyd questions? He's like, what do you think you're, what do you think? And Floyd was like, <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, I don't know why you, you doing yeah. this, but you asking me on your show. Like, yeah, did yeah. I ask you to come on my show? Exactly. Yeah. You're talking. Let me speak. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like the way he's like, what do you want? Like, what is the problem? He, he really is basically saying that. Why are you, why are you suing the NFL? Why are you mad? Right. He was trying bad. to bring up, well, they did say that they, they actually, did say. So you're saying that there's a lie. It's uh, like, calm your he's challenging man. you to have your cojones, which I just learned that cojones like, Terrence, is Spanish for that, balls. So you can say, go over there and pick up the cojones. And they're not talking about nuts. It's just balls. I got to fact check you. Cojones is balls in Spanish. Anyway, uh, but you're right. But Terrence, that's they, a, they tested you to see if you wanted to stand on that shit you were saying. That's a setup, though. Is that not? Is that a setup? Terrence, you don't think they got He's that. He's saying it. He mumbled. He just mumbled but it. But Terrence, you wanted him to get up there and speak and speak. And, and look, and, and challenge back. But that nah, would be he's a not challenging up. back. He's just answering with confidence. But you would want him to be, uh, I don't want him to be, uh, you, you did. Well, I want him to be confident. Y'all go back that and rewatch the interview, y'all. Look, uh, I think, uh, um, look, I'm mm. glad, glad, glad he did look, look, that. Look, what's the word I'm looking for? Terrence, look, they ain't gonna say that's why this nigga didn't get the job. I watched the interview and I don't say that's why this motherfucker didn't get the job. He in there saying, look. Terrence, I remember the interview. What would you do if, what would you do if, what's the word I'm looking for? What would you do if it was fourth down and you had a, Terrence, I, I'm not letting you step on. I'm not What's letting the you. the word I'm looking for? Terrence, I'm not. You know that, Terrell. You know that, that you was a manager. I don't even remember when he said that. Hey, look, what man, interview look. are you talking about? This is how y'all know I don't have this crazy black bias. Terrence, I'm looking at this shit nah, from Terrence, the widescreen. I'm looking at it. You would have I'm on his up. side, but you dropped the ball a little bit. Y'all go. Let me tell you, I watch these shows where these interviews. I've been doing this shit since. I've been looking at this shit since Scandal, Terrell. The black ass, whatever. You know how it is. One little. <laughs> and they're going to say, uh. Terrence, you keep talking about TV shows. We no, talking about the system. Y'all go you, and watch the interview. Y'all gonna say this nigga Terrence not crazy. So Terrence, he's what not. Do you, what do you, I'm asking you at the reporter now. What did he supposed to do? He should have spoke up and he should have spoke with confidence when that man asked you, "What do you want to see? What do you want to see?" I'll tell you what I want to see. I want to see more black coaches in this league. I'm one of them who I felt like has got out here and earned this job. Mike Tomlin had look. I would get in my soap, get on my soapbox. Mike Tomlin, he got the most wins. That he's, he has the most consistent wins in this league. He's black. 31 other white coaches that y'all have hired haven't done that. Now, I'm not saying that all black people can achieve that type of greatness. But if you've achieved that greatness from one, then when y'all are looking at the candidates, I'm saying we need more respect on our end. We should have so more head caps in so this league that are black, period. So you're saying Mike Tomlin only got that record because he's black? I didn't say that. And I just, and I just cleaned that mind. up. Terrell, I just cleaned that up with what I said. Uh, look, I just cleaned it up with what I said, sir. Have your I just cleaned it up with what I said, sir. See, but Terrence. Sir, I, are you listening to what I'm saying, sir? I believe. Because <laughs> I believe if you take that route and you too overly over the top, you're going to blackball yourself. Terrell, of course I, I wouldn't like, be yelling and screaming. But Terrence, I feel like they set that interviewer up to be like that, to try and get a rise out of him on purpose. Terrell, you that are would a only go. Foot Ball coach. I'm just saying I don't think it would go Did well. Did he for him. really look like a football coach that loved the I felt like man, don't get up there and say, look, you cannot, you do not have to do this. You wanna go public with this shit? You better stand up there like a man and speak and project. You want you to stand in front of this like he machine? Was up there whispering. That's my only my only critique is like, come on, bro. Come on. If you doing this, if he see this, like he never see it. You need, I need to see. A man with vision. Let me tell you, Kaepernick didn't shake. Kaepernick's voice didn't shake, and he stood up there with his chin up. 
My man went and got braids and all that with an stop afro. Stop making it seem like Brian Flores was on some pussy shit. He was not. I'm not. He stood on hella stages and said what he had to say. Brian Flores. What the fuck is he talking about? Terrell, you, you see. Now you making it seem is, like he was on some pussy shit and he wasn't. All I'm saying was, Brian Flores is taking a very, very, very important step. That nobody that, else would take. That nobody else can take. Brian Flores, we don't got, we don't Hugh got, Jackson. we don't got too many. Hugh Jackson went 0 and 16. They made you him do it. Terrell, you didn't they go. Made they made him did do not, it. Terrell, they did not pay you. You just they as bad did. as all the other people Terrell, are saying that he lying. Terrell, Hugh Jackson, I'm not saying so you're Hugh lying. lying. Terrell, I'm not saying Hugh Jackson's lying. But look, you know what we said, Terrell. Right message? Not the best messenger, Hugh Jackson. No. You went 0 and 10. Did they pay you to go 0 and, 0 and 4, 0 and 5, uh, Hugh Jackson? We watched you, Hugh Jackson. No, wait, Terrell. Terrell. We, Terrence, you Terrell, don't know what We happened. watched Hugh Jackson say that we're going to start Tyrod Taylor over Baker Mayfield, and that was a on-display L. How do you know that was him? He said it. He picked How him. How do you know it was his decision, Terrell? Terrence? They be pulling the strings. We literally You're watched. You're pulling for the puppet. We, Terrell, he we just told you that they was pulling the strings. We watched on Hard Knocks. It don't matter. He said, I'm sticking with the Terrence. I'm sticking with the. Okay, let me just say one thing and I'll so let you go. So you can take the credit. Let me say one thing and I'll let you go. He's not letting me say one thing. And I probably, all right, look, I just said I'm going to let you go. Because answer me this. Even if you saw it on Hard Knocks, what if the owner told him off cam, go start Tyrod and get on the camera? Now, do you think this that that's is ridiculous? What I'm saying, Terrell, is, is Hugh Jackson, no, that's not. You're right. That's actually something that could happen. You're right. He could be saying, I'm choosing to go with Tyrod over Baker. And that was somebody who told him to do that shit. <laughs> yes. I get it. But that's what I'm saying. The fact that Brian Flores' resume is what it is, we, they can't just shit on him as a coach. He didn't do bad. That seven-game winning streak that the Dolphins went on last year was impressive enough for me to say, Brush should have kept his job. He should have kept Yeah, everybody. Even the players felt that even way. Even the players. A lot of other coaches, too. All I'm saying is, like, damn, what was we at? What was we on? What was we talking? We were talking about Hugh Jackson. <laughs> Hugh Jackson is the wrong messenger. Brian Flores is a perfect messenger. But look, if you're going to be that messenger, we are going to critique you, Brian Flores, because we need this message to be conveyed with somebody who is going to be prepared. Now, look, I'm not saying I'm disagreeing. I, and we've gone far on this. I'm not saying that I'm disagreeing. All I'm saying is, Brian Flores, when they ask you, what do you want to see? You don't need to be mumbling, stumbling. I don't remember a lot of mumbles and stumbles look, and didn't even see anybody talking about that but you. Watch it. it. It was to the point where I thought, damn, did they edit it and try to make my man look bad? I'm going to show you it because obviously you haven't seen it. We didn't watch the same interview. I watched it on ESPN. He was right here, reporter, and then it's his two lawyers. And his two lawyers. I watched it live this morning. I don't know what edited version he you watched. Watching it. He had eggs crackling, popping. He wasn't watching it. You were too worried about the commies. Let's get to that. So the Washington football team. Hey, leave your thoughts in the comment about the Brian Flores situation and if you think it's fucked up or not. Right. Um, Which I do still think is fucked up, y'all. I'm just critical on both sides. I get what you're saying. Because yeah. basically what you're saying is you. I know you agree. You just want him to take a more. If you're going to take the. And I agree with that. I didn't want to tell you. I do agree. Mm -hmm. Like like you said, Kaepernick, when he took his knee. And they said, you need to not do that. If he would have just stood back up, then the knee that you took wasn't shit. Or if but, he would have shook in anything that they asked him. Um, yeah, he stood on what he um, believed in. You're right. He took a start, He took a stiff stance. I said some fucked up shit, too. <laughs> what? When I was like, that's why this motherfucker not getting it. That, yeah, yeah. He was <laughs> fucked up. That wasn't Crazy. fucked up, man. We speaking honest. This barbershop talk for real. This barbershop talk. They appreciate it. Because look, what am I scared of? Is Brian Flores gonna come beat my ass because I'm talking about nah, a, a reality? I'm gonna beat your ass because he's good for us. Because <laughs> he's taking the he's taking the right stance that a lot of these coaches, Vance, Joseph, DC, mm -hmm. um, Hugh Jackson. When were you you just was gonna keep yours as a secret? I guess, huh? Hey, look, all what do they say? All great soldiers have captains. You're a great soldier, but if you're gonna be a soldier for us, let me and tell if you, you a Saints fan. And you know you got that Brian Flores interview? Everything that I said. Terrence, you've been stepping talking. on all of my shit the whole time. I literally just let you stop talking, started talking, and then here you come with some random shit. Go ahead. Now I got to say it off the go-ahead. It's over with. I've been doing this. I've been doing it all day. 
Y'all gonna y'all gonna look and see. I felt like this episode, y'all might say Terrell, that nigga was a, on a ad or all or some shit. This nigga looks weird. Y'all know who Terrell look like? Hey, shout out Bobby Boucher. Right. You got on a 3X jersey. Number nine. And some of y'all didn't know that. Hey, look, and I'm no shame. Y'all go get this jersey. This jersey was y'all know y'all see this jersey? 19.99 on Amazon, y'all. Really? Don't even have an Amazon. Look at the Bourbon Bowl logo. This joint. Selling, yo, you selling that, huh? You selling Promo that. Promo code something me. But you know, like, you can set up your own Amazon card and get. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I can hook y'all niggas up. But look, $19.99, if y'all want to go put a nine on. Easy work. Terrell looks like the kicker from Waterboy. Y'all remember him? He was D from The Wire. Terrence, that's who you look like. I 42 yarder. You was the only one that was cool with Waterboy Mike right? shit, boy. You wanted your H2O with your gap. <laughs> this nigga. What was Waterhead his name in that joint? I don't even remember. Didn't he die in the movie? He died in Waterboy. He died in the movie, yeah. This nigga dies in everything he's in. He died in Walking Dead, I bet. Oh, my God. No, no he didn't. I, I stopped watching when they put him on the show. I said, I'm done. They put the whole wire cast on the show uh -huh. at one point. Yeah, they had Briggs. <laughs> they had everybody. They had everybody on there. The Washington football team. I don't even feel like. It's been <laughs> a long day. So this morning, believe it or not, we recording this podcast on a Wednesday. So it is 2 2 it's Groundhog Day, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that motherfucker saw his shadow, right? He did. Good. He saw it. Five more weeks of winter. Bet. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what is it? Look. Don't look. Don't yeah. look. <laughs> Shit. But uh, Groundhog Day, the Washington football team, we revealed our new name. And let me just tell y'all the days leading up, our merch leaked. The name itself leaked. And I'm telling y'all, if you're a follower of the Washington franchise, if y'all probably saw ESPN, Bleacher Report posted, it was probably big news. The name reveal, for those who don't know, if you, if you live under a rock, the Washington Commanders. Take command. <laughs> Hail to the Commanders. <laughs> hey, look. When I tell y'all that everything was leaking, and this is the thing, y'all. We, as a franchise fans, we were just fooled. We was thinking, okay, y'all, they just telling us that it's Commanders. They really going to tell us the real name come 2222. And we said, you know what, Groundhog Day, the dude kept reliving his life. We were thinking of the movie. Dude kept coming back, so we never know. We got all these theories because we was just praying that it wasn't Commanders. I don't know if y'all seen our merch leaked and then everybody – uh, was was spreading the pictures and it said commanders and it was like damn are we really about to be the Washington Commanders and and I'm gonna keep it a hundred with y'all as a Redskins fan for twenty plus years Washington football team fan I absolutely hate the name I really wish we would have picked an animal I wish we would have picked an a uh, a thing that's like dangerous like I really would wish we would have added some danger to our name. Uh, an example, I wish we would have, could have, we could have been something like the, I told Terrell, the, the name that I would have loved was something like DC Smoke. Like, you know what I'm saying? We could invest in smoke that fills our fucking stadium and we all just wear black or gray. We just be a, you know what I'm saying? Even if we wanted to be something like the, think about it. One of my favorite teams growing up, it was an AAU team. Look, remember the DC Assault? Of course yeah. they couldn't run with that, but like. Think about the terror you hear when you hear that name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even something like DC Bulldogs. Like, we couldn't be nothing that we could have just kind of all as a fan base get under. What the fuck are we going to say to us being commanders? What the fuck are we going to say? The commanders are coming to town. We're marching in. What the fuck? It's really not that bad. This is a trash. The name is trash. Because the name... What is a commander? What's our logo? Uh, I'm sorry. There's commanders everywhere. There's commanders in the military. There's commanders. There's commanders in the military. There's, There's commanders, commanders the military. everywhere. There's commanders in the military. Let me just There's bring. commanders in the military. There's commanders in the military. Terrence, there's commanders in other shit. Where? Let me look up what the fuck commanders is. Look, that's see, we shouldn't have to do that when we talk about our name. But Terrence. Let me look up some commanders. Like the fact that this, the, look, the unis, right? Unis don't look that bad, y'all. I mean, I was shitting on them at first, but now that I think about it, we might be able to get down with the unis. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm a fan of the black joints. 
But the name Commanders to me is like, I don't know if y'all know this. Y'all ever heard of the Harlem Globetrotters? If you haven't, they wear red, white, and blue. They do the crazy tricks. You can go down to the Verizon Center and pay $15 and get front row seats to see these <laughs> niggas shoot half court shots and all of that. If you've never heard of the Harlem Globetrotters, it does not cost fifteen dollars. <laughs> Forty-five. <laughs> you can watch the Harlem Glo- the Harlem Globetrotters are like five hundred and seven and zero. They've mm. never lost because they always play against the Washington Generals. It's just a trash ass general ass team that loses to the Harlem Globetrotters, and the Harlem Glo- Globetrotters can do whatever they want and they're gonna win. And I feel like that's what the energy I get from Washington Commanders. We haven't commanded shit for the last 25 years in the NFL, but we're going to call ourselves the Commanders. What are we commanding? It's not This is that like bad. calling yourself, you know what, we're the Denver winners. We're the Denver winners. Y'all haven't won in 20 years. First of all, seven years. Well, you know what I, no, but I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like... But Commanders isn't as bad as what winners would be. Commanders is actually, to me, a solid name. Let me just... Now, you know you're getting ready to do exactly what I was going to do, too. I was going to say... I was going to... Come on here. That's what I wanted to do. All right, you got it. I was going to shit on our name. However, you, 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 you rushing to my however. We don't have the worst name in the NFL. You don't. We don't. We don't even have the worst top... I don't think we have the, a bottom 10 name in the NFL. We don't like Commanders because Y'all definitely we have a bottom 10 name. No, we don't. We don't like Commanders because we used to be the Redskins. Like, we had a history and a whole fucking hail to the Redskins. We had the Hogs. We had, we had the Indians who would be in our stadium. It was just our culture. D.C. Yeah. Now Commanders is just like, okay, so we're switching from Redskins to a basic-ass name. I mean, we thought Washington football team – was temporary. Yeah, that tweet said they went from the Redskins to the people that killed them. You already put, you, did you already look at names that was worse than ours? I can get into some. I just think some of these fans need to be yeah, humble. Yeah, y'all should be very humble because even though we got a shitty name, let's, we can get to some shitty names in the NFL. Let's go through all of the names. Arizona Cardinals is legit. Ravens is legit. Falcons is legit. Buffalo Bills, I, I guess. guess. I like y'all logo because it's Not Buffalo. thinking about the team, thinking about the names. That's what I'm thinking. But I feel like logo and name goes hand in hand. The Buffalo Bills, we're going to come in Buffalo Bill. You know what I'm saying? Buffalo Bill. Buffalo, New York. So it's a big Buffalo, ass Buffalo. Big Buffalo. I like Bills. that. Bengals is elite. The Bengals have one of the best uniforms. The best. Bengals, best. They old logo with that's the lion. Yeah. Oh, the, oh I'm sorry. The Bengal. The, the tiger or the Bengal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tiger. But Wait, same thing. Idiot. Yeah. And no. I'm not just saying that because they're going to the Super Bowl. Um, not don't even need to go through everybody. Panthers, Bears, cool. Browns, we got a better name than y'all. Period. Browns is a trash name. Trash I'm name. Sorry, that will always be trash. That will forever be. Y'all don't even have. Cause this is the thing. Browns fans, y'all don't even hey, have Terrell, a logo. Come on, let's, let's stay on the name. Oh well, I'm just talking. You said logo was important. There's literally an oh. orange helmet. Y'all are the Browns and your colors orange. Y'all are the Browns, but y'all y'all logo is the uh, orange helmet. We shitting on everybody. Uh... Terrell, y'all got Broncos, which is a dope name. Cowboys, Lions is cool. Texans, come on now. Think about this with the Texans. This is what I was thinking about. Imagine if y'all name was the DC Washies. That's what Texans is. Yeah, Texans. What the fuck is a Texan? You live in Texas, I guess. Oh, so you know how the area people there are like if you're a Maryland, if you live in Maryland, Maryland, you're a Marylander. Yep. Marylander. Is it Marylander? Marylander, yep. You could be like that, yeah. Washingtonians. Washingtonians. What if y'all were the D.C. Washingtonians? That would be exactly what the Houston Texans We would Texans be called are. the Tonies or some shit. Ah, ah. I think I like commies better. I don't like commies. <laughs> commies? I'm so sick. You know what? People are not going to Packers. Like- we have a better name than them. Come on, Troy. Let's get through the, the names if we're going to do I don't this. really have a bunch. I don't really have a, I didn't Look, have a bunch. Let me say this. We have a better name than the Packers. We have a better name than the Steelers. We have a better name than the Chargers. What the fuck is a charger? Feel me? We have a better name than y'all. A buccaneer? What the fuck is that? A pirate. I don't know what the fuck a buccaneer is. A cult? A cult? And y'all horse y'all got a horseshoe on y'all as a logo? Lame as hell. Fuck out of here. Bro, y'all better watch y'all mouths when it comes to the my commanders. Saints? 
Y'all got a racist ass logo one with racist history. Yeah, that's you used true. to brand us with this logo, slaves. So New Orleans, I guess y'all cool with that. It was actually uh, in New Orleans too. <laughs> <laughs> look, when you real big on Black history, yeah. <laughs> and look, New Orleans Saints. You know what? I feel like y'all are saints, which means y'all are good people. Y'all are good. Not really. <laughs> look, Giants. The New York Giants. Giants is a dope name. The Giants is actually, even though they're like not really? really good. And I'm going to just say this. Chiefs? Y'all should have to change y'all name. It's bullshit. Y'all the still Chiefs have a Chief. do a Indian uh, chant. They do an Indian chant. They have Arrowhead. You have know you what? Have you heard the chant? Nobody else changed y'all name. Everybody keep their name. Because, look, the Chiefs have changed their name to a dope-ass name. And then they'll be like, this no Washington, this is how you do it. Hey, look, in short, I will forever rep my team. I will forever rep Washington. I had my, my I told you, I had my 15 hours of being upset. But guess what? Washington Commanders next year. Take command. We ready. New logos, new, new, new jerseys, new everything. I'm about to have all of that. Fuck it. This is my squad, and I'm stuck with them. This is my thing. I can talk shit all I want because I'm stuck with them. That's it. I'm going to complain. I'm a bitch. I'm a moan. I'm going to say all of this shit. But I will never leave this team. That's never a question in my mind. Mm -hmm. I, told, I told one person, I said, you'll be the only person that hear this. This is the perfect. Well, look, now everybody going to hear it. I said, this is the perfect time for me to go ahead and jump ship if I wanted to. This is where all fans. Look, everybody can officially leave the Washington franchise right now and have a for real reason. And be a I was too pissed off about the name. And for real, for real people say, damn, nobody really going to talk, you know? The Dan mm -hmm. Snyder shit. Oh, we got plenty of reasons to not be a fan. Mm -hmm. well, and go become a Chiefs fan. When you've been putting on these colors for a year, as long as I have been, it's no walking away easy. Mm -hmm. Now, I, did you want to talk about the loyalty piece? Remember you were telling me something about loyalty? Oh, we were talking about the Bengals. We'll save that. Because you were talking about the fans and how people be showing up, but they really wasn't there. We'll we save that. Okay. Well, we're not really going to save it. I mean, we might as well. No, because Terrell was talking about how we were the... Uh, we had the lowest attendance this year, Washington. And I was telling them, like, we also had a whole name change. What? Be I was going to say, because you said Washington fans are the most loyal fans. And we I said, are. Y'all don't even go to y'all games is what I was saying. Terrell said, y'all don't even go to y'all games. We had, you the said. Lowest, we had the lowest attendance this year. And yeah. I was telling Terrell, we had the lowest attendance this year because we got a whole new name. It's our second year with a Washington football team. We all know that the name change is coming. And change is coming. We really didn't really have a real big reason to go and see people play. Chase Young got injured, our star. Our starting quarterback got injured first game. Heineke went out there and was stinking it up for the first couple games, and then we, we, we lost six games. Think about it. We lost six straight. Then we ended up winning six straight. It's like, mm -hmm. of course, we're going to have the worst attendance and stuff like that. But what I was telling Terrell is these other people out here that's fans of these teams, like the Bengals, and, and Bengals, later, I'm going to put respect on y'all name. I will. But let's, let's keep it 100 Bengals fans. Y'all been out here. Some of y'all, I know y'all have been. I know y'all have been. And the main ones who have been out there, look around you. It's a whole lot of Bengals fans that got their jerseys out the attic. Because two years ago, y'all was some shit. And you didn't hear shit from Bengals fans. You feel me? Let me tell you something about at least Washington fans. You always going to hear from us. Y'all have always heard me talk. I didn't talk for two straight years with Heineke under, under center. We haven't had, you know what I'm saying? We haven't had a great season since whenever. But we, we, we'll always stand in front of our franchise. I've seen a lot of you motherfuckers not even mention y'all teams. Then all of a sudden, y'all get a little decent. And I'm hearing a lot of people talk. Chargers fans came and went. Motherfuckers came and went what, with Where were the Chargers fans when y'all had Phillip Rivers and y'all was some shit for them last couple of years? Come on, bro. No you, know, I, you know I know. And this year, they was doing so good, remember? You know then what I'm saying? Then that motherfucker tanked and they left. Where they at? Real fans stick around, bro. Real fans stick around. We going to be there. Shout out, to the, shout out to the real Chargers fans that I know. But most of them, you right. Because the a Bengals lot of these, aren't the only franchise. The Bengals are the only franchise. Chiefs are for real for one of the franchises, too. Before Mahomes, was there a whole bunch of oh Chiefs fans God. out here? No. Where y'all jerseys come from? They all got Mahomes and Kelsey jerseys. Right. I don't see no Bengals throwbacks. I ain't seen a Bengals throwback yet. I ain't seen a Chiefs throwback yet. Where y'all right. throwbacks? Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't got one because you didn't. You weren't a fan. Right. I had a Clinton Porter's jersey. My mother had a Randall L jersey. We had Brian Arakpo jerseys. Kerrigan. 
Fred Smoot jerseys, Sean Taylor, Santana Moss. This a red, this my this red skin. Look, red skin, my blood, Slim. <laughs> I'm a red skin, that was Slim. DC shit and Wizards John Wall. With the Bill is about to leave y'all. And this dude said, good. The build around Bill thing does not work. Honestly, Has never worked. Y'all I would need never, to stop from the ground up, never, trash I, ass team. I will never get on that, that uh I would never be on that. That train. I, I love, love Bill. We driving him. Just like John Wall said, Bradley Bill, my brother. <laughs> I feel like I'm related to Bradley Bill. He's Mr. Wizard. He has all, all right, of our Tats. records. Don't talk shit about my man. Groundhog Day is peak weird white folk shit. Groundhog like, Day just, just keep period. it a buck about how weird it is. I watched these motherfuckers <laughs> this morning. Come on, Let, bro. Should we should we be peak weird white folks? It shit? is y'all shit. Y'all gotta own it. We got weird shit. Listen. People think we they, don't like any other races but blacks. Puxatawney Phil out of the box. That's his name? Yeah. <laughs> Puxatawney. Because it's Puxatawney, Michigan, or whatever the fuck it is. Dude with a top hat takes a, I'm telling you, I, I'm sorry if this is offensive. He takes the groundhog, punks up, takes Phil out of the box, right? Sets him up there. I lied to you not. I looked at this groundhog in its eyes. He never looked at anything. <laughs> they said... They pull out this scroll, and then they say he saw his shadow. I said, when the fuck did he yeah, see when it? When did he see it? Who's the groundhog eye and expert? And we trust the groundhog with knowing that we're going to get five more weeks of winter. Yeah. This is some weird ass shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. That's the event you go to because you heard the food was going to be bomb after? Did he see it? Yay. Uh-huh. Where's that cake at? I'm going yeah. to be in the first in line. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Did the groundhog see a shadow? I don't know. I don't Did he? Know. <laughs> see what you said in the beginning of the podcast? You was like, I hope he saw a shadow. I was like, he did. You was like, good. And I was like, five more weeks of winter. Oh, damn. Oh, <laughs> Black folks don't know, we don't shit, know about shit about, about Groundhog Day. <laughs> oh, oh, look, St. Patrick's Day. That's not really our day either, you know? Nah, I mean. Because, you know, all we think about St. Patrick's Day, let me get my green. Green. Yeah, we, we don't know shit green. about the history. Right. Yeah. Hey, look, did St. Patrick fuck with us? Oh, I don't know. St. Probably Patrick. Not. Probably not. Irish. Maybe. I don't know. Wonder All I, I know is they be... Monet if that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not my dad. That's not my dad. Right, auntie? Yeah. <laughs> auntie. <laughs> auntie. <laughs> Look, I think the funniest thing about that is the way he say auntie. Some people don't know what you're talking about. But, I'm talking about Zeke from Paris. Sorry, y'all. Um, you want to talk about Brady? Uh, Gotta yeah. give Brady some love. Got to give Brady love. Shout out to Brady. Uh, and wow, this is a sports-heavy podcast. Turn yeah. up. Hey, ladies. What's up? <laughs> uh, they not dead. <laughs> Brady is the GOAT. <laughs> Brady is the GOAT. Greatest of all time. I'm going to be very short winning on this. A brilliant career. He could keep going if he wanted to. Shout out, Brady. He's been football my whole life. Ever since I started watching football, that man has been in the league. So, uh, shout out to him. It's an incredible career that I'm, we blessed to witness. Yep. All I'm going to say is... Brady, to me, is the greatest sports athlete of all time. Better than Jordan, better than Braun, better than Serena. Even I love Serena. He's the best. It is, uh, across all sports, it is the hardest to win a football Super Bowl. In basketball, you got hella seven games in a series. You know what I'm saying? Even though you got to play hella series, you can't just lose that one game and wish you could have played again. You could win that game two, game three, game four. It is the hardest to win a Super Bowl. So, all right, bet. And so on top of that, mm-hmm. he's got seven. This is, this is my case. You can say what you think. He's got seven championships. Seven of those that's so hard to win. Yeah. And in his last season at 44 years old, he put up what I believe outside of Cooper Cup is the MVP quarterback performance. Now you go. This is what I would ask you just because you said that. Would you – all right, bet you say he's the greatest athlete of all time, so let's just talk about this. Let's just, just random moment shit. Tom Brady's 28-3 to comeback against the Falcons in the Super Bowl uh-huh. or LeBron's down 3-1 comeback to the Warriors in the NBA Finals, which was a better accomplishment. I think it was LeBron. 100% would pick LeBron for that moment. But that's only one stripe that Bron has, and I think Bron got hella stripes. Yeah. Because Bron is on his He also trying. has the, Bron the NBA bubble yeah. championship. Bron I feel is, like that was a. Bron is chasing down Jordan. But Brady got seven 
Seven See, rings. You, you, you doing all of this shit based off the fact that he got seven wins. Yes, seven bro. Rings. At the end of the day, how many Lombardis you got? How many of these you have? That's why these fucking franchises, like, people want to talk shit. Look, motherfucking Titans fans talking shit. Bengals fans. I said, hold on, wait. How many rings do y'all have Didn't to be talking we beat the me? Bengals in a Super Bowl before? Terrence, the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl. You have to let them get their shit off this year until they lose. If they lose. They beat the Chiefs. You know what, Chiefs? I have my smoke for y'all in a second. It's fine. Damn. I pulled something in my chest today. God damn. I don't know what the fuck I did. Need to motherfucking stretch. How the fuck you? Why did I say we went to the Super Bowl against the Bengals and them niggas is, uh. Is this it? Terrence, who cares? Fuck y'all. We didn't. <clears throat> but, um, like I was saying, um, Brady has, it, it, it's all about how many championships you won. Like, at the pinnacle, you was able to beat all of these teams. Because, you know what people are not thinking about? When you think about uh, Brady's seven championships, yeah. people are not thinking about all the AFC championships he had to win. All the teams they played in the wild card that could have had that shot and beat them like the Bengals. All the, the seat, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's seven times he was able to do that. And did it at 43 last year. Yeah. Like, bro, come on, bro. To me, Brady is the GOAT. Y'all I think Brady is the GOAT, but calling him the greatest athlete of all time, let's just relax. Let's relax. Michael Jordan's fucking... Michael Jordan won six straight championships. And look, never lost. Brady got his ass handed to him by Eli Manning twice. You know what I'm saying? Brady, you took some L's. Man. Brady is, Brady is the GOAT in football. But Michael Jordan's resume... Let Jordan me tell you, ain't even, he's about to get lapped by Braun. No, Michael Jordan, Braun did not do what Jordan did. Braun, there's no, to me, I give it to Jordan because of the rings, but I also give it to him because this man won three straight championships and said, you know what? I've reached the pinnacle of this shit. I'm leaving. I got shit going on in my life. I'm playing baseball. Went and played baseball and said, I'm about to go back and play basketball. And they won three more, three straight titles. And he was the MVP for every single one. Not to mention, he literally introduced an entire culture to the world with Jordans. Look at what everybody that is wearing. That has nothing to do with him being an athlete, Terrence. Okay. I don't want to hear that. All I'm saying is he's just, to me, the most remarkable athlete, the model athlete, bro. I feel like Jordan is 100% a GOAT. He is Only the reason goat. I put Brady over them because he number one, five rings. I have seven. Doesn't matter how many times I lost. That Brady twelve don't hold more weight than that Jordan twenty three. I'm sorry, it don't. That's true. I'll give you that, but that don't mean nothing to me because <laughs> <laughs> because Terrence. <laughs> let's just tell the truth about your boy Jordan. Come on, sir. Let's not get let's not get into this. Like, can we All move right. past this? We can. Even though Jordan went to the the, the team, Jordan had a beast ass team every time when he re, when he left. Them niggas went back to the championship type shit almost. Well, deep, deep, deep in the playoffs. Yeah. He always had a B squad. Bron didn't. Uh, how are you and how are you? How was your day with trash? Uh, yeah. Were annoying? Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's just shitty dialogue. And people was like, all right, bet. Well, then how should you open up a conversation? So you, so what you're saying is people shouldn't say, how are you? How was your day? No. All right. I'm literally trying to read that out of my vocabulary, y'all. Because it's trash. Saying how are you or how was your day? Is absolutely garbage. If you ever texted anybody or you ever start texting somebody new, like, if I start texting somebody new, right? Uh-huh. Recently, if I text somebody new <laughs> uh, and they say, you meet somebody and they say shit like, how are you? Or how was your day? This type of, first of all, I don't even know you like that. You feel me? So... If I, in order for me to tell you about my day, I have to be mad detailed. And for real, for real, I don't feel like telling you about my day, for real. Not through text. Call me. Even if you call me and ask me, do I feel like detailing my day? Not always. Plus, this is the thing that I don't like about uh, what I don't like about how are you versus uh, how are you and how was your day. And I actually made little bullet okay. points. Zero effort response. You texted somebody, hey... Hey, how are you? Trash. You basically said hey again. You know what I mean? Because it doesn't really Because it doesn't it. say anything. You're <laughs> just basically saying, no, you talk first. You know? How are you? Good. Good in you. That's what you're going to get. Good. <laughs> you're going to yeah. get good in you. How are you? I'm good in you. How was your day? My day was good in yours. Fuck that. 
This is trash. Y'all are both telling each other to talk to each other. So my thing is this. Also, you wouldn't naturally say that if you were talking to somebody and if I see you at the Safeway, I'm not going to say, hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm not going to say that. I might say, how you doing when I first see you? Hey, how you doing? What about how y'all been or how you been? How you been is cool. But that is somebody you talk to before That's you write. Somebody, how you been? I'm, and, and this really is mainly for people who just start talking to people. Right? I'm going to let y'all know what y'all should do instead of using these two shitty ass uh, things. If somebody asks, instead of asking somebody how their day was or how they are, you should talk about yourself. You know what I mean? And you're not, and I don't mean be like I don't arrogant. mean be arrogant. But what I'm learning is what's better is instead of me saying, how are you? When I wake up, if look, if I wake up to a girl telling me uh, good morning, right? Or some shit, I'm not going to say good morning, how are you? At least anymore. And, I, and, and if you've texted me before, I probably definitely used to say shit like that. But this is the out. This is, this is our out. Instead of asking somebody how they feel, why don't you just say how you feel? That would literally entice them to say how they feel. And if not... All right, let's start. Let's do a, a mock text thing then. A mock text thing. You say good morning. I say, uh... Hey, what's up? You say good morning. I say good morning. I might say... Put it like this. This is another thing too. We be so scared to say shit. You know what I mean? We be so scared to like... Converse. If I'm texting you... All right, bet. Yo, what's up? Just woke up on the right. Look, you can say I woke up on the right side of the bed, ready to get my day started, about to get breakfast going. What's up with you? You know oh, what I'm so saying? So you already out the gate with the convo. You out the gate getting your answer to her asking you how you are out the way. You just starting with that. She going to read that and literally say her shit back. Oh, that's dope. I'm waking up and doing this. And if she don't, then she might be a trash ass texter. For real, for real. Mm. But this is how you gauge. Shit, saying shit like... uh. That's good for people, too, to talk on the phone. Nah, 100. Ask somebody how they are. How you know are what you? Saying? It's so standard. Or, look, or how was your day? Fuck that. Just start getting into how your day was. Hey, yo, what's up? What you up to? Because normally people will say, hey, or some shit. You mm. can say, hey, back. This my thing. You should not have to tell people this, but you do. <laughs> you, that's what I'm saying. If somebody texts you and they say, hey, you really shouldn't say, hey, back. You know why? You know what you're going to get back? How are you? What you doing? Why don't you just say what you doing? You know what I mean? Not Or like, let's say you don't even want to convey what you're doing. But if this is somebody that you texting with and, you, and y'all are on a how are you, how was your day type basis, you should be cool with at least letting them know how your day was. But look, G thing hits you, right? Mm-hmm. Talking about some hey in the afternoon. And instead of you saying hey, how are you, or hey, how is your day, you can just immediately give her your energy. Feel me? Uh-huh. Hey, yo, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Or you could just immediately start joking on her or something like that. But let me tell you. I was a serial, let me give you a confession. I okay. was a serial what you up to her. Okay, yeah. I will always shoot the what you up to. I don't think it's nothing wrong with what you up to in a way. That's the same as what you doing. We're not talking about that. We're talking about how was your day and how are you? These questions that, that garnish, not garnish. You're right. Garnish nothing. <laughs> <laughs> These are questions that will get you a very generic response that leads you nowhere. Let me tell you something. People are experiencing you. They're not, you're not, you got to look at it like that. You're experiencing me. You're hitting me. I'm going to give you me. I'm not going to be basic as fuck and look like an automated response. I'm going to be me. Yo, Terrence, what's up? What's popping? I'm doing this, this, and that. Or if, if you my girl. You about to give all of that up off the what's up? Nah, but it's almost like this. If somebody hit me and it's a girl. We're not talking about if your man's hit you. If your man's hit you, what's up? What you right. need? But for somebody you're entertaining, you have to give them what they're going to get. You feel me? All right, give me an example. Like if I, if, well, not I. Example. The girl hit you and say, Hey, with a bunch of wives type shit like they do. Right. You say what? I'm glad you in a good mood because I've had the longest day ever. Okay, okay. I see, I see, I see. You feel me? I see what you trying. You feel me? And look at the, look at the, look at the fellas watching. <laughs> the fellas watching and the ones listening that wasn't with me are like, look, 
<laughs> I see what he said. Because, no, he, 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 he played he otherwise. He, because what's the, what's the response? Now she get to go into a conversation now, a certain way. Yeah, because you gave you open the door for her to you, be like, what happened? And you then you gotta give your yourself over. opportunities to create conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself opportunities to create a conversation. Put yourself, put her through an experience with you, in a way. You feel me? It's not about, because let me tell you. Proud you, of this nigga. You text like a generic nigga, you're going to get a generic response, and you're going to get a generic experience that's going to lead to nothing. She need to be saying, damn, when I talked to him, he was crazy. He, he used to tell me that he was, like, going surfing, and then he said he fell in the water. Look, this is you. You're not telling her shit that's not real. And fellas, you can get look, off, fellas, you can get off a long day that what that didn't really happen. We can, that, that's a totally different thing. Yeah. But you see my but you play. You doing what you got to do. You doing what you got to do to and, set yourself apart from the other dude who's also going to throw the "How are you? What are you up to? What you doing?" Three times. Right. Another example is if you don't want to say that you had a long day, let's say you had a good day. You can say what you' about to get into. You know what I'm saying? What's up? I'm in this joint, getting ready to make this salmon, which I make the best. I make the best salmon, or like I'm about to make my go-to dinner. Or some shit like that. That's when I have her say, oh, okay, what dinner? And you could say, it's you can run from you that. You already passed all the We're bullshit. past how are you. I don't give a fuck how you are, for real, for real. I really don't give a fuck at this point. Yeah, you alive Because you're phone. not going to tell me how you really feel. Let's really get into that. Somebody asks you how you are, what do you say? What they want to hear. Not, what mm-hmm. you, not how you really feel. You say what they want to hear. Good. Good. And you know what? I just realized that when you get deeper in a relationship with somebody, that kind of goes away a little bit. The, yeah. Hey, hey, how are you? No, no, yeah, it, it's gone. When I get on the phone with my girl, we would be like, hey, I get on the Some phone. Some bullshit. Like, we get right, at, right to the shit. I'll get on the phone and immediately start flaming you in. That's it. Or immediately start goofing off on some dumb shit just to give you the mood that I'm in. You can pick up what mood I'm in when I pick up the phone. And I feel like because that goes away, I mean, that goes away because you know it's just that small talk bullshit that goes nowhere. Yep. And, and for real, for real, the ta- your takeaway, ladies, fellas, if, you, if anybody that's listening to that, your takeaway is to you got to create yourself better opportunities to create conversation. And by doing that, it's literally just being more upfront and open with who you are. You know what I mean? If you went and played piano today, you need to say, yo, just got in from my piano lesson. Getting ready to chill out. Bet. Or you could like, mm-hmm. how are you? How was your day? To me says you talk first. And for real, for real, all right, bet. Somebody asked me how they day gonna, my day was. They going to get a, a bunch of shit. For real, for real. Unless my day was whack. Oh, I'm not really fucking with you like that. Even if my day was whack, I be trying to jazz that drain up. You know how you're not fucking with somebody that asks you questions that they know you would give a response, but you just be short with it? Good. Good. How was your day? It was, it was chill. It was cool. Where my bag at? Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen my? <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was a good topic because that's something that I did for years. The how are you? Mm-hmm. How you are? And y'all, and I think the biggest thing I want to think I, that I want to I think the biggest takeaway from what I was saying is that definitely people experience you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like you got to deliver your experience every time. Look, you go to Six Flags and you go to the remember that you go to like the Superman. It's Superman everywhere. Like mm-hmm. it's not just this bland thing. Like. For me, it's like if you're gonna fuck with me, it's the same way if you go hop on a pop smoke track, you know the you know the vibes. You right. know? It's the same thing with you as a person. Like people come in and experience, you need to experience you who you are. That's dope. I think that's great advice for people because honestly, people don't think about that. Yeah. Cause you think when let they me try be the best me apart. for her. Let me see what she would like. So I'ma just be this cool dude. I'm a I'ma be nah, just be not necessarily be you, uh-huh. but for real, for real. It's already fucked up texting anyway if you get stuck with a jump that like the text. If you fuck with anime, you need to be like, what are you doing? I'm watching my favorite anime, which actually happens to be That's a lot. Death Terrence. proof. And guess what? Is that a lie? Yeah, but that's a lot off the what what what, what you doing. Well, not the what. Well, that's a lot off the hey. Well, if y'all don't know each other and you say you watching your favorite anime, shouldn't you tell her what it is or you just want to say I'm watching my favorite anime? And then, and then you want let her and say, "What is that?" Nah, get it out the way. That's that bullshit right there. Nah. That's why we need to sit niggas down. Fellas, you still need to be swaggy. This is why we need to sit niggas down. She doesn't want to hear that you watching But this is my thing. Your right. favorite don't anime. Don't be, don't be, you definitely want to have some swag and don't be lame. But my thing is also just, if you're <laughs> going to eventually have to say it, you might as well just get it off, bro. You know what I mean? 
Well, yeah, because what if you're talking to a chick that like anime too type shit? She might vibe with the one you like. And if she don't like it, bet. This is what I was just doing. And this is my thing. This is why I moved the way that I moved. If you don't fuck with me, bet. You don't have to fuck with me, but you definitely got me, though. You didn't get a, a B-grade me. Because motherfuckers would be out here saying that they had an opportunity with you or they had you. But did they really have you? They going to think they did. All right, bet. I'm this person that likes this, does this, wants to do this. This is what I do for my life. If you like me, cool. If not, kick rocks. <laughs> Straight up. I'm not here to put on no fronts no more. I used to. I used to put on the front. The, yeah, you know, I just be chill. I just be. And you, you really not trying to get into too much of the, your real personality? Fuck yeah. that. Hey, do you know that you look like the Michelin man a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I might just come left field with that shit. I might say whatever I want because I'm living my life and you're experiencing me. If mm -hmm. everybody did that, and that's good advice, too, because there's a lot of people out here, and I know it. You fuck around, get a bad jump phone number, and you like, she way better than anybody that I've ever talked to. I'm telling you. You might be a little nervous, like, am I like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, fellas, you might talk to a chick that dated somebody that's somewhat maybe kind of a little bit famous. Yeah. Even if it's just in the area. And you might think, damn, I don't got nothing going on like that. It's not about how you stack up against them. It right. don't matter. Mm -mm. And the ladies will tell you. They didn't give you their number because they think, oh, he's going to be better than Pucks of Tony Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and think about Euphoria, bro. Rue and Jules. Rue, fucks, Rue started fucking with Jules and literally was using her as her sobriety piece because Jules was letting Rue experience her in full. Like, this is who I am. Yeah. And Rue was able to get the Jules experience. And that's a whole different thing. But I felt like everybody, if you blend in, all right. You're gonna, it's a reason why you're going to blend in with him and him and him and him and him. That's yeah. all got left on red because they all were saying, how are you? And they all saying that same bullshit. The same bullshit. Let, her, let, let yourself be too much for her. This motherfucker this motherfucker's into too much. Because guess what? She might be shallow. Low key. Right. That's the real, that's that's a, the real that's joint. That's it. She might not be able to keep up with all the shit that you got going that's on. That's a fact. That's a fact. And once you get past her looking good, you're going to want something outside of... Telling you. That's true. Love y'all, bro. I want to see y'all win. This nigga Terrence just put on a sermon. Hey, no. look, I got a, I had a little bit of a, a sermon. Not a really a sermon, but <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> Cause you try and like <laughs> find it. Yeah. <laughs> like smooth it out. <laughs> but um it, uh I just I'll have one thing, one thing to say. It's not really advice, but it's kind of advice. Pay close attention to how your friends act. Around the girl you like. Hmm. Okay. But do they know you Feel like me? the girl? Yeah. Your man know you like this chick. Pay attention to how he act. Why you say that? Also, pay attention to how he act around the girl he like when you around. Do you become the butt of every joke? This is what I was going to tell you. Ah. Uh. You around the girl you like, right? Oh, okay, yeah, I know what you and, mean. Uh, and your man there. Your man know you like this chick. Is he cracking a bunch of jokes, making her laugh, or is he actively helping you? Right, you know right, what I'm and it's a difference. And real ones know that. Do you feel like my man know I like this chick, and he just said some funny shit, and ha ha, I'm laughing, and, and he making her like, is that really your? Is man? that your man? Trust me, this situation that I'm talking mm -hmm. about right here is the number one way to see who really will ride for you if some real shit go down. Yeah. Or if that's really your man or not. Right, because pussy will break that friendship. Yes. Pussy breaks pussy niggas will down break that and shit. expose niggas for who they really are. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you. I've known some cool ass niggas that I've known for years that did some fuckboy shit over some pussy that I'm not cool with anymore. Yeah. Straight One, up. 100%. And I thought you was a stand up nigga until you did some fuckboy shit. That's a fact. And let me tell you, that situation. <laughs> I don't fuck you with. Do I don't <laughs> fuck with that. Terrell. I don't fuck with that. I, I, I don't nah, fuck no, with that. no, no, no. And that's why I want to talk about this shit because a lot of people may not be able to. They might. You might not even be thinking about this shit. And this could be your man, like right. your, your man. man, your boy, your best friend. Let me just tell you, because the opposite side. How do your man mess with? How does your man talk to you when a girl that he like is in the room? Do right. he turn into a completely different dude? Like, why is he acting this way? Yeah. Oh, it's because she here. Understand how that man going to act in the future when it's some real shit. Because this the thing. Because this the thing, too. 
Let's say your man like this girl, yeah. but he used you to make her laugh. Like he say, oh, look at this nigga. He on this big ass jersey. The fuck? That's my man when we not with her. But he using but me using in this me. situation to make her laugh. But I'm supposed to be getting that, shawty. And, and it's look, normally the friend, you let your man get on you. You know what I'm saying? He knocking because you. Because fig you figure he just trying to get shorty. That's but it. But now you got to watch him. You have to. Because at the end of the day, you don't have to do that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you don't. Or you just not a funny nigga and now you trying to use me at your expense or the next man at your expense. So much to the point that you got to make the girl that I'm trying to get with laugh. That's the thing. That's the, you know what I'm I, I was talking about the opposite where now I like the girl. Right yeah. I, now, I like the girl because that would be you. You, you right though. Let's say I like the girl. You my man, and I'm cracking on you, and I'm cracking on you to make the girl that I like laugh. But I'm instead of supposed to you being my wingman, I'm using you as bait. Oh yeah, like you're not really funny, yeah. so you're using me. Damn, that shit goes both ways. That's what I'm saying. Because like, my thing is, look, I also understand me and Terrell. That's me and Terrell play right there. Yes. Terrell could be Terrell could talk all this shit about me to whatever girl he talked to. And mm -hmm. that's always been the, uh, you know, that's just mm -hmm. my brother, the brother thing. Oh, that's my crazy brother type shit, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's just the relationship that's built to what the point where if he start ragging on me, even if I felt hit by some of the shit he was saying, it would be an after. Yeah, you was getting a little, you know what I'm saying? Now, nah, but we are after thing because right I know though. it's all for shorty. But does that ever happen around a girl that, now you talking about if I'm already dealing with a chick. Nah, even even off the early tip. Like, if, I mean, if, if I just meet the girl you talking to type shit. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. It's cool if, you know what I'm saying? But if you nah, use me. I would never do that. You wouldn't really be shitting on me. You're right. I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know mm -hmm. what you mean. I'm just saying now, there is a thin line, Terrell, where you can use your man as like. For sure. As and long as y'all have that understanding, yeah. Yeah, where it's not, you're not really shitting on them, but you just kind of like, damn, bro, where your clothes at? Like, why you walking around this joint? You know how you getting on them because y'all about to go out, you in a good ass mood? This uh -huh. nigga sitting around all day. I feel like the, yeah, and you right. You know what you, I'm saying? You are right. That's There's not really line. shitting on him. You just kind of getting on right. him. But you know when that line I know is what a you little, mean. you know, I know how you it feels. Fuck. Fuck. Motherfucking camera all the time. You can tell. When I they, don't even know why I put that on my docket. Nah, that's what, nah, that was real shit though. That's real shit. People are definitely going through a situation that's very similar probably to that. Yeah. And the, and the only, reason, only reason I say this is because I feel like when it, shit, when it come down to it on some real shit, like later on in life, I forget what I was looking at. But that situation ended up telling them who that person really was. You know what I'm saying? Like, not that it wasn't because that person might not not be your man. Mm -hmm. They can still be your man, but you just understand, all right, I don't know if I can go to that person on some yeah. shit like this. Or be around this chick around this dude. Yeah. You know? Some men, some of your boys you can't be around your girl with. That's just... that's just it, Everybody has that one wild nigga that they might not want their girl around. And I feel like that's just how that's it just, is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Not even that he's like a dangerous, like he won't do anything. More so mm -hmm. than you just like... I don't want her and him in the same room type shit. Right. Oh, no. You it's know a weird, it's weird. And it's almost like a, a, your man that would like... All your girl's picks. Mm -hmm. Every time your girl posts a pick, he like every one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I never understood I never understood that. that. I'm like, my boy gonna see me. You know? My boy Don. His girl Morgan. I love to death. I wouldn't be sitting there liking every single pick that Morgan posts. You know what I'm saying? Right. Even though I be wanting to. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, just because... That's my sis type yeah, shit. But, but out of respect. I understand the bro code of shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like... If she posts the joint and it's just her, yeah. I'm not going to like it. If she posts it, yeah. And if you know how girls post. I'm exactly. not liking it. Right. I'm not going to have my man thinking anything. Because my thing is, I don't want him thinking nothing. Right. I like the me and babe pics. You and the me dog. Me and the dog. The kids, me and the yeah. kids. <laughs> Fuck For with sure. that. You know what I'm saying? But you're right. It's, it's just that that's just a very weird energy that is floating around. That definitely doesn't get talked about a whole lot. Yeah. That weird, that just weird, sh just niggas be on weirdo shit. Tell me. But um, did you want to say anything about Rihanna being pregnant and having a baby? We just got to throw that up there. Shout out to the Navy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, not yeah. getting no music. Rihanna, ASAP Rocky having a kid. <gasps> yeah, man. Congrats to Rihanna for just being a billionaire and living your life and being an inspiration that you can have kids in your 30s because it's going to be a lot of us there. I'll mm -hmm. say that. And I think it's a super inspiration for a lot of, a lot of people. Yeah. You know, a lot of women that be thinking... Damn, I, I should have probably had a baby whenever. Mm -hmm. Look at Rihanna. She became a billionaire first mm -hmm. and said, fucking, now I'm about to have a kid. And look, 
we're not even saying that you should have, because if you're 33 as well, if you're somebody who's 33 right now, we're not saying you should have been a billionaire by now. Right. Just, hey, your path is your path. And Rihanna, somebody that, yeah, she made a billion dollars before, mm -hmm. but for real, for real, let's really talk about it. She was trying to figure this love shit out first. Yeah, she figured out the finance part, but just like you, if you haven't already, she was trying to figure it out too and just finally figured it out. So, That's right. That's what I see. Your financial journey is completely separate from the other journey, bro. You can have all the money and look yeah. at Floyd. Right. No bullshit. That Nelly, Nelly taking that girl from Floyd, I feel like ne Floyd never recovered. Man, Miss Jackson. Miss Jackson losing that. That was the happiest we've seen Floyd. When he was with Miss Jackson. When he was with her. That was bad. He got money, but. And he always had more money than Nelly, but that didn't matter. Is Nelly still with her too? Yeah, I think, I think they are. I don't know with Nelly, though. He was still trying to get an Ashanti on the stage. If I was a boxer, I would. Come on, Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> These hands registered. But, yeah, uh, shout out to uh, Rihanna. Shout out to ASAP Rocky. I'm not the biggest ASAP Rocky fan. Um, but I'm not a big know, fan of ASAP Rocky either. Him as, like a, him as a dude. His mu some of his music is dope. Yeah. Uh, I fuck with some of them old ASAP mob takes, uh, mm -hmm. tapes, the cozy tapes. Uh... But yeah, shout out to Rihanna, yeah. man. Shout out to Rihanna. Mm -hmm. That baby is gonna be paid for. Mm -hmm. And so it's cool because you know, as a Beyonce fan, I just gotta say this: we already got to see y'all favorite have three. So y'all finally it's get to have y'all. Always a competition. Did y'all get to see y'all favorite when they uh? What you talking about? I know you're not about to get ready to say. This. I know you. I I know you ain't get ready to say Grammy. Did she win a makeup? Uh, what, what can I think about a Rihanna one to be honest? You was getting Did she ready have to a say Fenty Beauty. You look. was. Get, I don't know. You was getting ready to say Grammy, and Beyonce is the most winningest female in no, Grammy No, I wasn't about to say Grammy. I was about to say, does she have a, a multi-billion dollar business? Nah, that Ivy Park is, uh, come on, y'all. We got deals. We got it's deals. It's on the up and up. It's on the up and we up. We got deals over here. It's like, nah, that, that new I, Ivy yeah, Park line that she dropped that, was dope. The heart. Valentine's joint? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, Rihanna getting ready to open brick and mortar stores. So man, man, re She moving. moving, yeah. No more music. Billionaire Re. Guess what, y'all? New music. Will be played in my stores. <laughs> <laughs> People outside don't even we give a in, damn. We in that joint waiting. <laughs> I did want to ask you some shit about Power. Um, because the episode was dope. Another week where Power had a solid episode and Euphoria had a trash episode. I didn't think that episode of Power was that good, y'all. I didn't think that episode of Power was that good. I felt like both Power and Euphoria were both all over the place this, place this week. Nah, Power was... Well, Power was kind of weird. I ain't gonna lie. Power was all over the place, for real. Think about it. Who was... Who was I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to ruin it, but like this is power. Look, who was shooting at them? Remember, who was shooting at them? That didn't make any sense. To what, me. On the court, yeah. Who was shooting at y'all? That might have been Lorenzo. Oh, like, Lorenzo. <laughs> this, the way this fucking story is moving, I did want to ask you a question that was a spoiler about that girl. You don't got to. You just answer real quick. You think she did what she did with old girl because she was a snitch? She really was a snitch, and she not really about that snitch shit. Or do you think? She did that because she know Tariq really loved him and not her. Did you see the picture of her laying in the bed with Tariq? And they were like, he didn't even give you a pillow. <laughs> the bitch was leaving on her hands. Damn. So you know what? Oh, yeah, for sure there's definitely some of that behind it. Yeah, that's what I was that's thinking. That's why he, she was pressing that nigga. He, she's a rat, really? But then again, think about it. She watched you make this girl your girlfriend, and then you ended up in fucking jail. So it is kind of like... Yeah. I'm about to get rid of some shit that you afraid to get rid of, but you need to get rid of for your own girl. Because first she put you in jail. Now she got so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so on the wire. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. So you right. And Tariq is. She's getting D from that nigga. She's definitely feeling all of that shit that you're saying. She's definitely. Yeah. You can't dish no D to these chicks and just think that they just cool with it. If you, if you fucking a girl that's just cool with it, you need to be very careful of that joint coming in and out of your crib. Exactly. She a little dangerous joint. Yeah. And she fucking you and don't have no type of feelings or nothing involved. She can just get up and go. She got some other shit going on in yeah. her life. And you need to be careful with and your you feelings. And you a part of how she coping with that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's some real shit. a whole bunch of real shit this episode. Um, I think it's time for us to admit that Euphoria is, is not good anymore outside of whoa, what whoa, it looks whoa, visually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Outside of it visually, the storytelling is trash. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We the young that. kids are like, I don't get what people don't like about it. You know, I have one question. What is the show about this season? What is, the, what is it about? I'll tell you this. They are doing very expansive, like, 
they're going deep into the the char- these other characters, and it's one of these things where we didn't really care for it. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying not to do what I did with Game of Thrones, where I wanted things to be a certain way and they weren't. Like I looked at a couple episode recaps and a couple things to try to get a better feel for it. And what I'm just starting to feel is like this director is definitely trying to evoke, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, social conversations. That whole thing with Kyle at the end where he went off on his whole family, you see what the caveat in that was? Like him basically saying if I was, he basically said that he was, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And he said, but if I was this, y'all wouldn't even feel a certain type of way. That was the whole message of that whole, basically mm-hmm. the whole thing. I felt like the whole message of his whole character. Trying yeah. to bring light into the fact that he had to live a double life when he should have lived his truth. These are the messages that they're trying to get out there. But we're literally losing grip on a story. That's what I'm saying. And my because thing is Because we didn't even give a fuck about Cal that much for him to have all that screen time. Yeah. Him I really driving. Was, I was like, all him right. laughing at everything. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about none of this. I'm not. It, it's not funny. It's just annoying at this point for the viewer. Right. It's supposed to be annoying for his sons. And you know what? I felt like he was the villain. And they trying to like make you like him a little bit now. Like put us on his side. In the beginning, he was like a whole rapist. A monster. He wasn't a rapist. Uh, well, he did. Well, to he kind of did. Jews. Well, he didn't rape her because it was consensual, in a way. Jules went over there. Terrence, but that does not mean it consent. doesn't mean. Yeah, he's definitely reckless. He got tapes the whole. But the real thing is, he wasn't really. That's the that's the thing, Terrell. He wasn't necessarily a rapist. He Terrence. was just somebody that was wild, and he was getting people to do that. He wasn't bringing people in there and killing them. He was just recording this shit on some creep shit. Remember she said it would be the I same thing? he thing? raped that girl. Nah, he didn't rape her. It just seemed like rape because of the way it was shot. I'll rewatch season one. But think about it. He just had lived a double life. He would, he would get with a little kinky You do dude. know if you're having sex with somebody and they don't like it anymore and they tell you, no, you have to stop or else it's rape. So was yeah, it rape? Jules never said stop. Jules let dude finish. Jules was just she sitting just there like. She just didn't enjoy it, yeah. She just really didn't enjoy it, yeah. Most, dudes, most, most of the dudes he slept with probably didn't enjoy it. But the thing is, it's like. He was supposed to be, he's supposed to be coming out of his whatever. My thing is like, we were fooled thinking that this whole thing would be us following Rue. Like they were saying that this last episode four was one of the first episodes where we really didn't get any Rue narration besides the first minute where she was talking about that, that mm-hmm. orgasm. Look, people going to be like, damn, this show ridiculous. <laughs> but besides her talking through that, there wasn't any narration. Nothing. So... They are saying that episode five is about to be a turning point episode. It's going to be dark and that it's going to hopefully. You're right. Let me tell you, we've been baking a lot of shit. The, yes. We've been baking a lot of stories. We've baked so many inciting incidents. Think about it. The Cassie Nate shit. All right. We want to see how this is going to unfold to Shorty. Mm. The cat situation. Yep. And they're doing cat dirty this season. We said the same thing on the last podcast. Which crazy. It's like Sam Levinson don't know, didn't want to write for her and said, bet, I'm going to just take all my quote unquote sexy characters and Make write it. for them. Yeah. It's weird. I- I'll say this. I said that HBO, I said that Euphoria was one of the best, was the best show on HBO. I got to walk that back. I got to walk that back. 100% do. It is still the best looking show on HBO. It is still the most fun show. It's still the most stunning show. However... You really got that off and said it was better than Succession. They had, all, they had all the potential. They had all the potential. This season let me know, okay, I put them on a level that was a little too high. I thought we would be running with a Rue story that could run us into a season three. Mm-hmm. This is looking like it's going to have a 13 Reasons Why type of lifespan where we just hanging around with these characters for the fuck of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but you're right. After season one, it was dope after as season fuck. one, the way season one was moving, though, Bro, I'm, I'm telling you, like, there was a, like, the carnival scene. Like, there yeah. were things, like, they were putting these characters in different areas, but they made sense. It was like things were happening and the story was going. Now it just seems like they all got as much money as, not as much money, but they all just got no care in the world for real, for real, it seemed like. Just always at an event or we all sitting in the bathroom. Yeah. We all just ensembled up, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we know you got a nice ensemble. And you know, I, you, I love the soundtrack, but they starting to get pointless with it. Yeah. Like, honestly, the end of this episode, bringing the dude who made the soundtrack in to sing, it's like, all right. And you know what? Come on. Do we? Right. Labyrinth, Even though that last scene was amazing. It was. It was dope. But like, I'm okay. Like, did he have to be here? That's like if you got Beyonce to sing Lion King and Simba's nozzling, look, nudgling up next to Beyonce while she sings. 
What did she say? Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but it look, would though. be like, all right. Did Beyonce have to be in this joint? And you know what else I feel like? I feel like all of the homages to old movies is starting to get like, all right, it's cool to see. But That's what the fuck is the point? Is it? Cassie sitting there crying in front of all them flowers? Why? Because she's what? been crying the whole episode. It's, it's like, like you never have anymore. Oh, they're trying just... to be like Midsummer or this other movie that did they did this. Or this scene was based on this. Yeah. Fuck out of here, Euphoria. All your pop culture references and all of that bullshit don't mean nothing if you don't got a detailed-ass, dope-ass story. I'm watching Oz right now. The most terribly shot shit ever. But the story is so damn good <laughs> that I'm stuck in this shit. Fuck. We, we have three Super Bowls. The Chiefs have two franchises. So I wanted the Chiefs to lose so bad, and I'm just so grateful that y'all was able to pull it out. I'm just so grateful. You're grateful that the Chiefs fuck the damn imploded. Chiefs. You're grateful the, that the, the Chiefs Bengals, fucked up the bag. Basically. The Bengals won. The Bengals yeah. won the game. Hey, look, you keep having a little, little lint on you. I got you. The Bengals won the game. Yeah. The, you, are you ready to walk back your Bengals hate? I have to because y'all made it to the Super Bowl. But, like, y'all not about to win the Super Bowl. What does it take for you to give them some props? Are they going to have to win the Super Bowl? My thing is this. You play, like I said. Uh, Bengals, we have to put respect on y'all name because y'all made the Super Bowl. For real, for real. Y'all are having a New York Giants 2008 type of season. Let's just keep it 100. Let's keep it 1,000. Super Bowl winning season then. They won the Super Bowl that year. because, But they started wild card. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My thing is, for them to beat the Raiders, the Raiders was probably one of the easiest draws you can get as an AFC divisional uh, game this year. The Raiders were not that good. To it was Chargers or Raiders, Raiders to get in. Everybody knew that the Chargers would have been the better team. The Raiders managed to get in. The Raiders beat the Chargers to get in. That's what I'm saying. But we all know, even though the Raiders pulled that game off, the Chargers probably would have been the more okay. stout team that could have went deep, made a deep playoff run. Raiders... Y'all don't even have y'all head coach that y'all started with. Y'all don't have Henry Ruggs. Cut Deshaun Jackson. Like, y'all team is just, imp- is just go all over the place. They beat them. Then they beat the Titans, who don't even really have Derrick Henry for real, who didn't play Derrick Henry real. played. Right. And they stopped him. Then y'all play the Chiefs. The Chiefs go up 21 to 10 to 3 on y'all. Three straight drives of score, and it was 21-10 at halftime. But the Chiefs looked unbeatable. It looked like this game is over with. And then the Chiefs imploded in the second half. The, the Bengals' secondary played incredible, and Pat Mahomes had nobody to throw to. I will say that. I will give credit to the, to the Bengals' defense. Y'all definitely stepped up in that second half. However, y'all already know what the fuck is good. And y'all would say the same fucking thing to me. You t- I'm a Washington football team fan. We get the worst Commanders. feedback. Commanders. <laughs> we get the worst feedback when we win. Y'all, nobody ever gets us credit. So excuse me for being the way that I am and calling it like I really see it. But Terrence. Bengals, y'all are actually getting ready to, y'all actually have the opportunity to win a Super Bowl, but y'all also have to keep it 100. This has been a very, very fun ride. When we went out there and we put up, and we almost beat Brady. You know what I'm saying? Then we beat Brady this year. They always said, oh, it's because, this, it's because of this. Oh, yeah, it was because of that. Oh, yeah, they this. Oh, but we can't do that with other teams. Like, it doesn't make sense that the Bengals played the Raiders, the weakest AFC, one of the weakest AFC draws. And they played the number then one seed. they played seed. the number one seed who was banged up and injured, haven't played for a week. You said that about the, what, the Packers. Or they haven't played for a week. The Packers went out there like they didn't Titans, play for a week. Titans, you know damn well. Terrell, he was faking they the They beat the Titans with Henry. Terrell, you know damn well that Titans team was not the Titans team that made the number one seed. All right. But that Chiefs went team out there, was the Chiefs. Right. And they were the Chiefs in the first half. Was dogging y'all. Thank God y'all came back. Why do y'all act like y'all are out there dubbing niggas and people are supposed They're to keep beating They're beating teams that they Terrell, beat the number one and number two me, seed. Terrell, but you're telling me I'm sleeping on the Bengals because I just haven't picked them. Why would I pick y'all? I'm not picking y'all for the Super Bowl. I'm not saying you need to pick them. I'm saying you have to put respect. You're still trying to come here and make a case for why they got They're lucky. N- I or... still don't think you're going to win the Super Bowl. People are saying that I'm a hater. On, why are you hating on Joe Burrow? Why are you hating on the nine? First off, I fuck with Joe Burrow as soon as he got drafted. I've always fucked with Burrow. I can post a highlight from literally when he got drafted. Y'all know I fuck with Burrow. I'm getting that Burrow jersey next because of the nine. You're going to get a Bengals jersey. I'm going to get a Burrow jersey. However, I'm calling it like I said. I'm an NFL fan. 
Am I, y'all, look, am I really that far fetched with what I'm saying? Am I really that far fetched, Terrell? It just comes across like you won't give them credit. I'm giving them credit. Y'all made it to the Super Bowl. I'm just not picking you again. You're mad because I haven't picked them and they keep winning. Uh-uh, I didn't like this. I can admit, though, I didn't like the Super Bowl. I didn't like the smoking cigars thing after y'all won a division. That's why I deemed y'all was going to lose. And wait until Joe if, Burrow. If y'all win the Super Bowl, I have to put respect on y'all name. You'll I come on the podcast yeah. that following Friday. I'm already putting respect on y'all because y'all won the Super Bowl. Shout out to y'all. It is so dope for you to be, to be able to even go and watch that game. If you're a Bengals fan, y'all did it. Y'all reached something that all of us as fans want, want so bad. And I'm telling you, you are so envious to watch y'all do. But also, I don't give a fuck how y'all feel. Really don't. Y'all know what the fuck is good with us. Straight up. Oh when wow! The last we time beat y'all beat y'all. Washington. When's the last time y'all beat Washington? It's been a minute. So what I'll say, we don't ever get the easy route. You talking Terrence. to the bully kid about being nice? We've been. We, I'm from where bullies get bullied. When I'm from, the bullies get bullied. You're not a bully though. We the Washington Commanders. What is everybody talking about so, today? But Terrence, what is everybody talking about today? Shitting on our franchise. I'm from. I'm, like I said, I'm cut from a different cloth. But you sound y'all like a butt-hurt Redskins fan. I don't. That doesn't want to what give another butt? team credit because you never got credit. Terrell. Like, y'all never I'm did not, what they did. Terrell, I'm saying shit that makes complete sense. And you know it. What I said about the Chiefs, what I said about the Fal- or the Titans and the Raiders, you have to give it up. You, you you're, you're not even. All right, bet. Let's make a bet. On air, we're so, making a bet. All right, bet. Did the Rams have as easy as a path to the Super Bowl that the, that the Bengals did? They had an easier path. An easier path, you they think? They had a way easier path. Who did they play? The fucking Rams played the Cardinals first. Cardinals first. Cardinals, Cardinals, Cardinals just beat the Cowboys, who was the number one team. The 49ers beat the Cowboys. No, the Cardinals beat the Cowboys. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals went out there and beat the Cowboys. Yeah, but the Cardinals was a bluff. They was great in the first season. They was like 10-0, and and then they just started sucking. Well, Cardinals fans, I know y'all lost D-Hop, but damn. Um, and they did lose somebody else, but whatever. The Rams, um, the Rams had the first week, first round by. Yep. Then they played the Packers. The right? Rams didn't have a first round by. Yeah, they did. No, they yeah, they had a first round by. Or did they? They did. They played the no, Cardinals. No, the Packers did. The Packers did. The Rams played the Cardinals. Cardinals first. Beat the Cardinals. Yep. And then the Rams, the Rams went on and played the Buccaneers. Right. Beat Brady and the beat, Buccaneers. Beat Brady. Right. Okay, that was tough. I guess the receiverless Brady that we all knew you was gonna be receiverless. He threw to Mike Evans on on Ramsey. He didn't have Godwin. He didn't have he didn't have Antonio Brown. He lost. He literally is playing with Mike Evans, and that's it. Okay, and a couple other pieces. But so you beat Brady. We knew Brady might not have all his weapons, and then y'all beat the 49ers. Then, then they, then they so beat you the beat wild card team, the fourth seed in the in the, in the Bucks. I don't what I don't know. We'll put it like this. You're right. Maybe they didn't have the easy. Maybe they had a relatively. You could say that they had an easy path. I personally just am. I just unfortunately have picked against the Bengals every week because mm-hmm. I just. Not only did I not like the cigar thing, I just don't think they're gonna win. I just don't think they're gonna win, and they keep surprising me every week. I want to bet you that if the Bengals win, yeah, the next podcast you can't say nothing about their path, and you gotta come up here and give nothing but straight respect and love. I will. Nothing about. I can't them say winning. shit if y'all win the Super Bowl. I can't say shit. Otherwise, right now I'm just seeing it as a good ride. It's a fun ride. Wow, we made it all the way to the Super Bowl this year. But are y'all about to win? No. That's an OBJ trophy. That's a that's a Von Miller trophy. I'm picking. That's a Matt Stafford trophy. Make our picks next week. Did you see the Super Bowl prices? Ridiculous. <laughs> no, the way cheapest you seat was forty eight hundred dollars. Yeah. And with taxes, fifty three. Yeah. <laughs> seat fee. Fuck. That's but ridiculous. All right, but yeah. all right, y'all, we finna get out of here. Happy Friday. Uh, turn up episode 86. We 86 weeks consistent. Four more episodes in season two, believe it or not. And in episode 90, we're gonna run into season three. Yes, sir. So shout out to the realest now for hanging out with us. We taking a break too. It's like, y'all know how we do. <laughs> consistent kings. <laughs> <laughs>
And people were like, "You did it? Y'all still want to go?" 